Hey, I'm Barry. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, last week was the first time I was at this cemetery. This is the uh, Pleasant Cemetery in Pleasant Township near Mount Sterling, Ohio. And uh, just out of um, whatever uniqueness, I took a photo of this monument here. And that leads me to tell you that, you know, every grave has a story. And I found this one to be interesting, so I'd like to tell you about it today. This is the uh, grave of Fanny Hagelgans. She was born January 16th, 1862, and she died right around March of 1909. And I'll tell you more about that in a minute. Right here is her father, Henry Hagelgans. He died in 1903, about six years before his daughter did. And over here, um, see if I can zoom into this, is her brother and his wife, Henry Hagelgans and Martha. They also had a son, I think his name was William. Fanny was a single woman all her life, living on a 152 acre farm, just about 10 miles down the road from here. She said she would never marry until she found a man that could outplow her in the field. It's also rumored that she held her own in the poker room at the local saloon right down the road from here. Also, I don't think I'd mess with her. No one heard or saw of Fanny for over a week around her farm. So neighbors broke into her home only to find her dead on her couch with a gunshot wound to the head. They don't know exactly what date she died, but they know it was probably around the last week of February or the first week of March when they found her. That's why there's no date on her tombstone, just the month and the year. At first glance, it looked like a possible suicide, but the coroner found the pistol had become clogged with mud after the shot that killed her was fired. So they knew that it was murder. Her hired hand, a young man from Germany, had also disappeared right around the same time. So there was no spec there was speculation that he was the murderer and a large reward was posted to find whoever killed her. Uh, no one heard anything about it for about three years. And then uh, fast forward three years to uh, 1912, there was a man by the name of Alonzo Roebuck. And he told his father-in-law, I don't know if he told him in person or how he got this message out, but he told his father-in-law, Edward McKinley, that he wanted $100. Basically, he's... Uh, blackmailing him. He told him he wanted a hundred dollars to keep silent or he would tell the authorities about Edward and his brother killing Fanny. Edward told Alonzo that if he mentioned it to the police that he would blow his head off. Alonzo's wife, that's Edward's uh, daughter, Luella Roebuck, she finally went to the police saying that she could no longer sleep at night and uh, she could no longer keep her silence and told them about a crazy night, about the night that she had overheard her dad, uncle, and Fanny's brother, Henry, talk about killing her. She said that she was upstairs in her bedroom when she heard the three men in the kitchen below talk about how they had killed Fanny. They killed her outside, tied her up, and dragged her into the house and placed her on the couch. They killed her uh, hired hand, that uh, guy from Germany. They, they killed him and buried him in the woods to make it look like he was the killer and had ran back to Germany to escape prosecution. Uh, the police made a simultaneous arrest of all three suspects. Henry, who is Fanny's brother, he, he admitted to the police that he had paid the McKinley brothers $865 for the murder. Um, and for some unknown reasons, the McKinley brothers, they were released a couple, couple weeks later out of jail. But what was funny was, um, uh, her, his wife brung him cigars to jail. And, uh, I mean, he was getting out. Everybody knew he was getting out and she brought it as like a, you know, celebration thing. He set his jail cell on fire and tried to commit suicide. So for somebody that was getting out of prison or getting out of jail and was being let go to try to commit suicide, I thought that was a little funny. Matter of fact, I think they even took him to the insane asylum there for a while. Um, but uh, Henry, 
Fanny's brother, he recant recanted his admission to the sheriff. He gave it to two people that he had done it, but he recanted it. And as far as I could tell, he was never prosecuted in her killing and is still considered an unsolved crime. Um, what I think is really weird is that if he did kill her, why is he buried right next to her? Uh, it's it's uh, unknown. I haven't really found out any more, but as far as I know, she was never, he was never prosecuted for it, and the killer killing was never solved. So I learned all that from just driving by and taking a picture of a monument. That's why I say every every grave has a story. And I hope you like this one. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you later. Bye.